obsession led someone to land on the moon an obsession led someone to create the internet an obsession can lead people to do things that create a massive impact in the world if done in the best possible ways and with the right intention and with the obsession to help people find out what drives them and how can their lives be better this human being when he was being treated for cerebral palsy for so many years during his childhood realized that there is so much more he can do in this world to give back to the community with death looming upon his head almost every time when he lay there on the operating table led him to have a different perspective about life about people fast forward he not just broke the conventional beliefs about being specially abled person but he created his own space and brand through his contributions in the field of pr he has been featured in forbes india he has been the advisor to and a member of several esteemed organizations in various capacities such as rotary international newspaper associations of india public relations society of india international human rights organization and rotary means business among many others he lives by the philosophy and believes that it is so important to give back to the community because when you share when you do more you become more this human being is none other than sumit agarwal who is intensifying lives and thus intensifying humanity through his contributions storytelling and immense impact in his best possible ways welcome sumit to intensify life podcast and we are so glad to have you here today thank you i i have been going uh, through some of your posts and you know what struck me most is your storytelling and when some something relates so simply with someone it creates a connection and to begin with i would definitely like to ask you that you have a powerful story no doubt and we would like to definitely know more about it but have you ever thought that one day you would be doing what you are doing today getting featured in forbes helping people you know having that diversity inclusivity into different organizations etc have you ever thought about that definitely i did in fact a lot of people would tell you that you know they would don't know that where their lives are from at issue but i see that there was a need for this and i see that nobody was doing it so definitely i want to be one of the people to do it and nobody in india talks about diversity and inclusion that much if you look at the us if you look at the european countries they have a much more broader mindset when it comes to diversity and inclusion but india being home to so many cultures and ethnicities and races that we have but still nobody is talking about diversity and inclusion in its true sense or true nature where nobody is left behind and totally you know can resonate the point because when you said that india is maybe one of those countries where there are n number of uh, different cultures different backgrounds and so many different traditions so you just started off in a very interesting note and my next thing i would like to ask and no more about is when did you actually started feeling towards this domain to work in the specific domain which led to pr and how did this journey begin see uh, i was born in seven months right and um, i was told by the my mother was told by the doctor that either the child or or you will survive fortunately both of us survived and when when i was going for a schooling right for the schooling purposes what happened was i got rejected from kathi schools and at such a young age i was very helpless i did not understand what was happening and my mother quit her profession as a lawyer to ensure that i get educated in a code code normal school so so uh, you know that is something which stuck with me for my life even, even if i was very small during that time that is a story which i used to see my mother going to different schools taking me and then 
at the end of the day, coming out crying from the school. Because the principal is saying that uh, the school is not equipped to handle these kind of children. So, 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 you know, certain experiences in life. And then when I got every day into a normal school uh, near my house, and uh, I saw that I was isolated by people. People did not mix with me because I was different from them. They did not talk to me and in the recess, I used to often stare out the playground from the window, sitting alone in the school building and wondering what is wrong with me. You know, and then I used to cry sometimes alone in the classes. And uh, when I started Growing up and uh, going to colleges, it was the same story during my graduation. During my post-graduation, however, people were much more receptive because they belong on a certain age bracket of maturity, right? where, where people understand that uh, your background or your life can be very different from theirs. And they are much more accepting and receptive. Right? So when I started applying for jobs after after my MBA, um, I sat for six interviews. They said you are an MBA in marketing and uh, you cannot work. You are rejected. Okay. After my sixth interview, I said enough is enough. During my college days only, I was a part of Broti, I was a part of Thai, I was a part of many multiple organizations. Then why should should I be a you know, why should I be a taker from the society? Why should I always take something? I don't want to take employment, I want to give employment. I'm starting on peer agency. And you know, I started working with clients, uh, like children's um, homes, homes for the differently abled, clients in the social sector. I still do that because I believe that why should I be the only person creating impact? My clients should also be creating some kind of impact. And that is why I choose my clients. I don't work with everybody. Because, because it's very important to surround yourself with people whose wavelength matches your mindset. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that, Sumit, because when you sh share the aspect it is now we are sitting and talking about some of the moments that you have experienced, your parents have experienced previously, but we can only imagine the kind of years, the kind of time that you had to go through because typically in our society, everyone thinks that, okay, differently abled or special abled people should be separated from the normal crowd. And we don't even know what's the definition of normal because normal definition is so much distorted <laughs> that it actually makes us question a lot of things that we ourselves has de decided for the society, in the society basically. And uh, another important point that you mentioned that, you know, when you used to sit there and stare at the window and look outside and kept wondering what is wrong with me, right? And your mother actually took the pain and she i would say initiative and she actually made sure that you get the best of education i would like to shed some light over here and ask you that there are so many kids right now not just kids even adults and people who are going through these kind of similar situations okay majority of their time their parents are the ones who feel either ashamed who feel scared feared and because of that that doubly impacts the kid yeah. so in that scenario what do you think could be the best ways for a parent to handle you know to help the children to grow in a better way and not put more pressure on them see um like i am right now if if, if somebody can become like I am right now, I don't give a damn about what the society cares or I don't even care about what people think of me, right? I'll, I'll just do whatever I want, right? And um, this has been, this has been 
uh, great deal of song for a lot of people as well because I have, I just speak my mind even if I'm on stage I'll just speak my mind and even in conference I like, just speak my mind and that has been a problem for a lot of people because see uh, in a lot of conferences that I have said that the education system is not great. I have said that unpaid internship is an exploitation. I have said that parents think of their children as their retirement plan. I have said that children often bank on their parents' wealth for, for you know, getting to where, where they are in life. So, so I, have, I have said very controversial things in my life and I haven't given a damn. I still don't. So, so uh, my advice to the parents of uh, the quote unquote uh, people with disabilities right, uh, are um, that don't care about what the society is about you because at the end of the day they are not going to provide you a job or give you a phone. Absolutely. And just like the way you expressed it, it shows the kind of confidence that's being instilled since childhood and the, the fearlessness. Like I want everyone to, who are watching this right now to understand and feel that what Sumit said is very powerful. At the end of the day, it is your life. At the end of the day, nobody is co uh, coming and you know, taking care of you about your food, shelter, anything. So do what is best for you. Yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of people keep saying be mild, be well mannered, be be respectful. Yeah, be respectful is fine. And obviously, you should have certain morals. And you should always respect other people, but don't be silent, silent or reserved. When, when people tell me be silent, I tell them hear me roar, right? That, that, is, that is what I do. Like, I have a voice, I will not be silent. And I will use my voice to amplify the cause for other people as well. That is a powerful statement and that is a powerful message. Thanks for sharing that, Suna. So, help me understand. Um, Actually, you know, the journey that you shared in glimpses, it makes me ask you that during those years, since childhood or adolescent, what has been the biggest realization for you? When, when you see you go through so many surgeries at such a young age, you realize the concept of mortality. Mortality is what makes you realize that you have a finite amount of time of what you do in this earth. And if you don't create an impact, you will be forgotten. You will just make money for yourself. People will just uh, you know, remember you for your bank account. Your, your immediate relatives will remember you if you mention it in their names in your will that's it nobody else is going to remember you unless you make some impact i love that line <laughs> and i totally agree with you what you said Ki mortality is so such a powerful reminder for all of us because we think okay others will die we behave in a certain manner that we will not die tomorrow morning and it is such a powerful reminder to utilize our potential, to utilize our capability, whatever we have on this planet and not just take, take, take the line that you mentioned, also give back. So that is really powerful. That is really powerful. So Sumit, uh, related to cerebral palsy, okay? So many people honestly might not be even aware about this situation. So can you shed some light about this, the awareness in India and Typically, you know, how to spread that awareness among the masses so that nobody else faces the kind of challenges which many kids and parents actually face. When it comes to cerebral palsy, nobody is really sure about which part of your body is it going to affect you. It happens due to the lack of oxygen in a certain section of your brain, right? And, and uh, 
it might affect your hands it might affect your legs it might affect your ability of movement it might affect your ability of speech and it might affect your ability to move at all but you know there are a lot of myths when it comes to cerebral palsy people think that most of the people who with cerebral palsy have some form of mental um, challenges where well, this is not true only very few people with cerebral palsy have mental challenges which they try and you know uh, work around yeah so typically uh everything is not associated with mental challenges and we don't know ki where it is going to hit and which area of the body it is going to affect right and the more we speak about it the more we spread awareness about it maybe the people who are discovering about this you know who are knowing ki they are suffering the cerebral palsy and at least it will help them to live a normal life which actually they think that Okay, people don't think as normal. So yes, that is very important. There, there are a lot of things um, that people can do. First of all, if people can stop assuming what what the other person can do or cannot do. For example, I used to travel a lot, and my mother used to make me to travel in a stroller, right? Stroller for babies. Uh, when I was younger, I used to travel in that, and I. I could talk. I could, you know, uh, I could spend hours talking to a stranger. Uh, like I was very friendly. But there were some people, like, um, you know, its name kya hai? They look at my mom and they laugh me. Uh, what's her name? Where is it from? And they go, "Hello, I'm sitting right here. What is wrong with you?" <laughs> Now this is really funny. I mean. Seriously, uh, people assume a lot of things. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, you can speak!" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I can speak." <laughs> so this actually brings to the point of the awareness level about various things, which typically, of course, it's not just about medical situation or anything, but it also questions the conventional education system in our country that. we have been going through for such a long time about the awareness levels of so many practical things in life so a very deeper level of empathy when you look at it all together all it comes down to is a very deeper level of empathy and uh, placing yourself in the shoes of that person absolutely so when you when you brought this point of deeper level of empathy it also brings me to the aspect that I've seen many places. You have been speaking about toxic posi- positivity. Yeah, empathy is very different from toxic positivity. Yes, but it just brought me to you know give yeah. me a glimpse of you have been sharing things. Can yeah. you please shed some light over there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have seen things like uh, I have seen a wheelchair bound guy, and I have seen their parents constantly telling, "You try it, do it, you can do it, and then you can do anything in life." Okay, what if he cannot walk and wants to become a writer or a poet or something like that? That no, that like no, he can do everything. First, let him do it. Okay, and then he can do everything. He can do everything. He can do everything. This is so powerful. The example that you shared. For example, if I am not able to walk, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't bother me that I have to walk, you know, if it if it is not hampering the ability of uh, my daily lifestyle or whatever I want to, why do I need to walk? Absolutely. and typically uh, i'm sure you have also have you faced these kind of situations instead of me telling you let me ask you so have you faced these kind of situations yes we do uh in fact a lot in fact um, uh, you know a lot of people are like 
you can you can try uh, 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 using crutches. You can try using uh, you can try doing this. You can try doing that. I'm like, no, I'm in a company and I'm busy with that. They're like, no, no, no. This this is more important than that. I'm like, who gave you the authority to decide? I never remember giving you the authority to decide whatever I do in my life. I don't do in my life. My legs and my ability, whether if I can walk or not, doesn't decide my level of success. Absolutely. So the point that you shared, your ability to do something or not do something and your ownership or your authority to do something, not do something, it's your choice. And it has nothing to compare to your success level in life. That's so that's really, and thank you for sharing that, Sumit. So now tell us, Ki, what are your hobbies? What do you love doing when you're I, not? I read a lot. I read a lot of non because again, uh, the time is the time in your life is finite, right? And you can never, you know, decide on both. If you read fiction, you won't get the time to read long fiction, especially when you are running a company. It's all comes from online management. I am into gaming. I play PC games and that is for my entertainment but when it comes down to books I'm totally into something which will help me grow and any any specific books that you keep referring to again and again and keep love reading again yeah, and... yeah. in fact if somebody is going into public relations I would suggest them uh, go for trust me I'm not lying that book is by Ryan Holiday it gives you a very deep insight into how public relations works. That is cute. And since we are talking about public relations, you have built a company and you also have a team who works in this PR domain. Yeah. So tell, tell us something about your company. Like what kind of services do you provide and since how long you have started this? See, uh, my company typically provides two services. Right? It is into managing limited accounts for people. Right? Where, where I manage the accounts for people, especially in the diversity and inclusion domain, all of my clients, most of my clients, not all, 80% of my clients are in the diversity and inclusion domain. Most of them are founders of companies who are into assistive technology for persons with disabilities. Right? Um, Second service that I provide is media relations where I help people get featured on different media platforms. And your company name is PR Signal. Yeah. Right? That's a very unique name. So any thoughts, any story behind the name? So uh, when I first, uh, you know, was in the company, okay, what do I do? I talk to people. What, what does that do? It acts as a signal between people to help communicate. And what is PR, PR all about? PR is all about communication. What does communication do? Communication gives signals to the other people. That is interesting. And the name is also very catchy. Like once read or once heard. So the tagline of the company is bridging relationships. Yes, building relationships. Amazing. Bridging relationships. Bridging relationships, yes. Because I believe that uh, all, all PR companies bridge relationships. And uh, so you have your office, like everything is done online. And since Personally. yeah, you have a team and uh, you work together. So uh, help us understand if somebody wants to take your PR services or you know get help from you for their business, etc how they can reach out to you? Most of my clients or, uh, you know, people who reach out to me is uh, either through my website or mostly through LinkedIn or Clubhouse. I am active on all three, uh, these uh, two platforms, LinkedIn and Clubhouse. 
Okay, so LinkedIn, Clubhouse, and website. Typically, LinkedIn and Clubhouse. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So, I have another question. If if not an entrepreneur, what would Sumit be? I would be somebody who is trying to become an entrepreneur. Okay, so something has to be in the creative domain. I mean, something in a problem-solving domain. That's an interesting. And you also mentioned about you travel a lot. I do. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to. Uh, but since my parents have gotten older. very difficult for them to manage me when I travel. So I was kind of restricted down to the details. All right. And Sumit, any message particularly you want to share with our listeners today? There are things uh, that will happen in your life and you don't think that everything is lost. But you know, life has its own way of making things fall into place and everything happens during its own time what people will not tell you is um, you can grow up your childhood is very structured you go from one class to another class and uh, then what happens is you go to college and then you try and graduate and then you think what do i do when i just life doesn't come in a structured manner education comes in a structured manner the society thinks you the society teaches you to think in a structured manner but life doesn't come with instructions so you are not supposed to get sad when things don't go according to your plan because life does not have a plan So that's supposed to go with the flow. Wow, I, I'm not going to forget that line because life does not come with a structure. Education system does. That is so powerful, and that actually, you know, this is what we have never been taught since childhood. That there is a particular pattern which we uh, we have been imprinted since childhood. That is, get good marks, then get into a safe job. then you should marry at this age then you need to do this then you need to do that so everything they feel that it is structured but when life hits hard then they start blaming and complaining without thinking that what am i not listening to or what am i missing out to see what life is trying to tell me so that's a very powerful message and uh this shows how you are actually intensifying lives in various aspects because we have seen your work in various categories in various uh, domains like diversity inclusivity right so your work speaks a lot and just the kind of impact you were talking about i wish you and i wholeheartedly say that you are going to create and you are still creating so much of impact in the world that you know the world is going to see so thank you so much sumit Welcome to this podcast of Intensify Life, and we are so grateful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much.